Check, check, one, two. Hey, how are ya? It's, uh... We're back. It's been a while. It's a beautiful fucking day in Malibu, California. I got my, uh... One of my real, real life... Okay. Real life brothers. Um, <laughs> is this third time on the pod? <laughs> Pull off the chain. Is this third time? I think it is. Is it third or second? I think third. You Wait, did the first that? one ever. You were the first episode. The Duke, when I'm wearing that Duke jersey? At your crib? When I'm wearing that visor two, in the right? studio? What was the second one then? We what was the second one? I think that was the second one. What was the know. first one then? Who knows? I think this is the second one. Is it the Sachi? We'll double check it. We don't. It's have, the third? We got a one man team. What was I wearing? Here. We have we have no audience. What were we wearing ask. during that interview? He had the Duke jersey, the black and blue Duke jersey. Yeah. And, and what then, was the second did one? We do another one. I don't know if we did. What did was the other one? one? At the ranch. We did. I would bet. I, I mean, our listeners will know. They'll be like, "Yeah, you fucking idiots." <laughs> um, but yeah, real life, real life brother it's been a minute. in town. It's been a minute. Here, um, you're out here. So I've been out in Malibu uh, for about four months now, I think. And you've been out here. This is the most I've ever seen you in a fuck like just with how we're living and yeah. this kind of nomadic <clears throat> vibe that I'm on. It's like tough to match up. But you've been. I've seen you four times in the last like month, I believe. Right? Yeah, I love Malibu, man. Malibu's my Malibu's like a sanctuary for me, aside from my home in Tampa. So. I love being out here. Not a huge fan of LA, downtown, or Beverly yeah. Hills, just just specifically Malibu or kind of anywhere up this coast. Yeah. And that's why you're out here. You're looking yeah. at your crib, your crib hunting. House hunting, man. House hunting. I've been for like, I feel like over a year now, just yeah. trying to find the right fit. Yeah. I think I may have today, but yeah, I see my career. Um, when I get done playing, I see myself kind of setting up shop and Malibu kind of being my main vibe as far as where I want to be. Yeah, you uh, you were ahead of me. I mean, my, my people rocking with Steve for a long time now, I've seen tra huge transformation in how I'm operating and living my day-to-day -day life. It's funny, like, think about how close of friends we had at Duke and that group of D Duke baseball guys, but like, this kind of a good example of what happens as you get older and like, mm -hmm. You might still have those great memories and friendships, but as your your life accelerates at whatever pace it's accelerating, to have somebody who, you know, we've kind of always like, yeah. you know, same wavelengths. Yeah, and like as things, we were had different lifestyles for sure. You know, I mean, I was raging for the last ten years. You've been working <laughs> your ass off, <laughs> but you know what I mean. As we yeah. climb the ranks of what we're trying to do, and you know, I feel like we've always been open. You know, what I mean, open to getting better. In ourselves yeah. which a lot of people aren't in life so i feel like our conversations are always coming from angles of how how do we better ourselves how do we take it to the next level yeah and in order to do so you need to be open you need to be open to change you need to be open to to, to everything kind of attached to nothing so i feel like you've taught me that and we've kind of kept that bond spiritually mentally so for, much for so, so long. much synchronicities behind the scenes yeah. i think I, it's kind of cool to touch on them a little bit i remember I had gone through some struggles personally where I, you know, I was achieving some things that I thought were going to make me happy and and mm -hmm. uh, I found myself not happy and kind of in the trenches. Mm -hmm. Found spirituality really spoke to me. Um, and, and then, you know, I think shortly thereafter, some, something either with your body or something in your personal life mm -hmm. was going on and we were talking and I was just like, man, I... Remember, we started talking about the seven spiritual laws of success yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and all this. And uh, it's probably during like kind of my ACL, maybe. Yeah, it was oh, early. It might have been right after that, but yeah. yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. And just these alignments, you know, you can't fake it, right? Like, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like, we've had a bit of luck on our side in regards to how our lives keep evolving and changing. And, you know, you actually were way ahead of me in this Malibu lifestyle <laughs> of, you're very, you know, you really prioritize space. I yeah. wanted to get your take more on this. Mm -hmm. um, you really prioritize your personal space. Um, you do so much. You're doing a lot of the inner engineering work. I'm bullying you to fucking meditate, but you're it's doing the, the breathing. Step. Yeah, you know what I mean. You're you're a huge curator of your own vibe, and and the, I think we spoke about this. I had some pro athletes come up to me, baseball guys at a party years back in LA, saying yeah. like that conversation you had with Marcus about yeah. It's all about finding your vibe and fucking really dedicating yourself to whatever vibe makes you great. You yeah, know, absolutely. You space. Um, I feel like younger me was someone who was wasting a lot of energy. I was I was out a lot. I had a lot of wasted friendships, relationships that were kind of 
I feel like if at this point today, there would have been no way for me to operate as high as I do um, at the level that I do while I still had those relationships or friendships around me. So as I get older, in order to continue to be great as I want to be great for everybody around me, you just learn that you need to adapt and change. You need to really put a priority on your energy and your space. I used to waste a lot of energy and that becomes very draining. So now in order to accomplish everything that I want to do in life, I'm in the house. I'm in the house coming from someone who was always out and about running around in my younger 20s. You know what I mean? Ever since I've been probably 27, I kind of curated my home where I'm lifting in my house, uh, sauna, steam, hyperbaric chamber. I have a chef in the house. I don't leave home. I'm, I'm literally can create and do whatever I want within my own vibe in my home. And it's also where I feel most comfortable. So now my ideas, my mind, everything runs very smooth and my clarity um, is at a point where it can't be touched when I'm in my home. Mm -hmm. So I've just learned how to kind of operate. I'm a, I'm a creative in, in, in a sense. I'm an athlete too, but at the, at the like first and foremost, I'm a creative. Yeah. And I think creatives and artists essentially need space in order to really harness your ideas, in order to really structure how you want to plan out life. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. You said something... Which I'm I'm reading a book right now. It's Rick Rubin, um, and it's it's more or less it's not you know he's a music producer, but it's really about being a creative person. Mm -hmm. Human being alive is creating. You ha you got to create. This is life is canvas, and how are you going to paint it? Hundred percent. You know what I mean? And make sure you try to paint your best picture, 100%. or let it let it go wherever it needs to go. You know, um, but I guess. What I want to know more about you and just just how you got how you arrived to that place mentally was it because of you were feeling drained? Where you know what what were those like? What yeah. made you kind of explore it? So I think it was my injury, my my ACL is where it was a kind of shift in my life. Essentially, I truly believe that not every injury is a freak accident. Certain things I truly believe are meant to happen. I truly believe I was drained and I was put, my body wasn't in position that it could continue to do what I wanted to do. And my body like stopped myself in that moment yeah. in order to reset and regroup in life. And yeah. I, I was open to it. Um, I got with incredible doctors, went back uh, to school, obviously came back very quickly from my ACL. But ever since that point, I've taken care of my nutrition. I've had a chef. I've taken care of my body. I prioritize getting a hyperbaric chamber. I prioritize doing everything I can, dry needling, sauna, steam, anything I could possibly do to put my body slightly ahead or allow myself the ability to recover quicker, I put a priority because at the end of the day, my mind and my body are the two most important things in order for me to function at my highest degree. So when I started to learn to curate myself and be open to what really makes me better, I wanted to put that all in my home. And I wanted to just curate an environment where I feel the safest, most comfortable, most creative, where I can kind of do anything. Yeah. And that's what I'm always searching for um, even when I go and stay at places where I have to rent, I'm always staying at certain homes that yeah. really fit my vibe because if I'm in a home where I don't feel comfortable, nothing's going to be able to flow properly. Yeah, Nothing in life. Yep. It's all connected. I won't be able to pitch good. I won't have proper relationships with my family. Mm -hmm. Everything is in tune and everything flows together. So I, I, I truly believe in having a home base and be able to curate your environment so it fits exactly what you need. Yeah. And and uh, the Malibu extension, this is going to be... This is going to be kind of where you think as the, as, you know, whenever the end of the, the Marcus Stroman baseball player mm -hmm. chapter is closed. Yeah. It'll be before that. I don't know if getting a home out here You'll soon. be out here. Yeah. And then in regards to, in regards to where, where you want to take it, I just, I know you so well. I like to, I think it's, I know a lot of athletes and I, I, I always, I'm always interested in kind of what's making their their worlds go round yeah. outside of the game when you're mm -hmm. you're a fucking veteran at this point. Yeah. You played the game, you're seasoned. Nothing, no, no part of it is new. Mm -hmm. I just had Yelich on. We talked about yeah. this. Like, um, tell us about some of the things. I mean, I I just think it's kind of it's really some of my favorite parts about you knowing yeah. you so long and being able to watch and be parallel to it. Um, you kind of have a you kind of you have a pretty huge hunger for life after sports as well in regards to just endeavors and things. A lot of guys are like, man, I want to hang out. You know what I mean? I just, you yeah. know, like. No, I'm moving, man. Even now, I'm like moving. People don't understand. I, 
I built my own cleat sneaker clothing company, Shugo, which I'm yep. wearing right now. These are the breads. Yep. I'm going to come out with the cleat version of these. Yeah. My first start in Wrigley. So yeah, I started that company. This has been three, four years in the making right after I left Jordan where I realized value, potential. Yeah, elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, it'll keep it short, but... Uh, yeah, no, you don't, even, you don't even need to shit on yeah, Jordan. No, I just mean, the, I, the, the idea. The idea of being with the brand. I mean, I, I think you see every creator kind of get into it when you're giving another brand your ideas or you feel like you're not being valued. You get to the point where it's like, why don't you just do it yourself? So I, that's, that's pretty much what I thought back when I left Jordan. I had been with Jordan, Nike, and Adidas. I realized there was no true value um, being attached to a brand getting free merch every once in a while or going on the ID website and buying some kicks that everybody else or is Or some buying. upfront cash as well. Even upfront cash, yeah. Like what is upfront cash doing in the, in the long scheme of things? Ownership is kind of honestly, equity and ownership is, is what you want in the end. So I went all in on my own brand, my own cleat, my own clothing company, Shugo, which is now direct to consumer, which we're really launching. We're about to take a- Tell, a, them, tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about what, uh, I don't want to cut you off. I yeah, just yeah. know some things. I don't yeah. want you to go past just- the the business plan so far for Shugo and, and your entry point, like you guys started with local Long Island, right? Like where you're from, or it started there, right? Doing local little leagues and uniforms, yeah. So uniforms, the, the uniform side, which I think is interesting. Yeah, so Shugo will encompass everything now. Originally, we were doing HDMH uniforms, which is my other company. Height does measure heart. I'm the shortest pitcher in the big leagues. I started that early in college as a clothing brand. Evolved that. That's now my foundation. Shugo will now encompass the uniforms I used to do at HDMA. So it's all under one umbrella now, Shugo. Top to bottom hats, sneakers, on and off the field clothing. Um, pretty much a, a, a full brand that I've been working on since I left Jordan. So the stuff you're doing with the Cape Cod League, right? Was mm -hmm. that HDMA? That was HDMA, but we'll transition to Shugo. Cool. So yeah. I, I, this is new information for me too. I didn't yeah, know Yeah, we'll transition to Shugo. Uh, Which same those quality. are all future big leaguers. It's, it's a yeah, great... it just makes more sense because Shugo now will encompass everything head to toe. Cleats, sneaker, off the field, trainer. I'm working on 2024, 2025 cleats, trainers already. We have a big deal in the works that's coming out soon that I can't speak on uh, for Shugo. But yeah, that's my passion. I, I love footwear. I've always loved sneakers, cleats, clothing. So it's right up my alley. Um, HDMH, Hype Doesn't Matter Hard is now my foundation, which um, sponsors and, and does everything to encompass giving back to inner city youth. Um, we're about to launch a scholarship program in 2023. So we have, I have a bunch of things in the work. Um, I have my own wine label coming out. I'm going up to Napa tomorrow. So it's just dope because <laughs> I, I've, I've known you so long. Yeah, and I yeah. know these are all little things that we just talk about in yeah. passing. But Anything I want to do, I do. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I, honestly, I've had, I've had, I think that's a huge characteristic of, you know, the guys, guys who really, you know, have a longevity just in mm -hmm. their life where they're, they're able to constantly create their life the way they want to do it. The act is doing. Yeah. It's really where it's just about doing and I, any, any thought you exercise it, you know what I mean? hundred percent. Scratch that itch. I trust my gut over anything. And that's one thing I've learned as I get older, it's to really trust my intuition. Yeah. And when I have a vision at this point, I know I can attack it, especially with my work ethic. But I truly believe, like you said, I feel like a lot of people were allow a lot of people can have 99% behind an idea or a project, and then they can allow 1% of negativity that comes from maybe someone in their inner circle, someone around them, and then automatically they can be shut off that idea. I'm the opposite. I need one ounce of belief in myself that thinks I should do something and I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I, could, I couldn't care less about a single thought or opinion from anybody outside because I already know once I'm locked in on something, I already know my vision and how I attack it. Yeah. So I think that's important. I think a lot of the times people have great ideas, but like you said, they don't put any action into them. Yeah. Not only do they not put action into them, they'll allow society, people from their circle, people around, talk them out of that idea, which is wild to me. I think ideas, there's Rick Rubin uh, talks about this, and this is something that I, I really- They're not ideas I until they until you put action to them. Yeah, and even so- I agree. Even so, even so they more belong to the universe. Mm -hmm. You- raising a, your frequency to receive like antenna like we're yeah. frequencies you know what i mean I, we're vibrations and if that idea is in the ether and it's time for that idea someone else will access it and do it like you have to get there see the idea eye to eye take it as your own actualize yeah. it but even if you think about it on a deeper level like why do these ideas pop into our minds at these times 
where are they coming from? Mm -hmm. You know, I've had these these thoughts before. Yeah. And it's just it really does feel like something that you you like tune to the radio channel. And like if you're living here above the noise, yeah, you're receiving it. These ideas are here, and you're like you're able to feel them. You know what I mean? And have some clarity about doing it or not. You know? I agree. I think it's really a key. This kind of whole self care space, something that you've really been good at. Um, and just I was saying, we started this conversation like I'm catching up to you now, yeah, and, yeah. and that you saw me living like a wild man. Mm -hmm. You know, really, really had an overwhelmed feeling mm -hmm. what I that I wasn't visiting yep. I, I wasn't accepting it I wasn't listening to myself for a while so being a great partier and socializer right mm -hmm. and, and intro uh, extrovert Extra you know yeah. um this is me yo yeah. you know this is my identity I'm cool like that's the guy I always wanted to be as a kid you know like yeah. the guy that everyone wanted to go to his crib and has the girls yeah. and yeah. <laughs> the alcohol and we're it's always a good time no yeah. you know like that was who I identified with so mm -hmm. much you talked about change a little bit, and I talk about change all the time. It's just back to that initial question, like, what in life, you know, do you have certain, I know you talked about the ACL, but what in life kind of keeps you on that wavelength of, of constantly being, uh, you know, constantly being able, like able-minded to just change? Because it's a two-part question, really. It's like, it's very challenging to do when what you're doing is working. Yeah. You know what I mean? And for obviously outside looking in, everything you've done in your life is is working, you know? Like But, lo but like you said, it, it looks like it's working, but I've also been adapting and changing yearly. I truly believe that other other athletes and other people might have a different approach. Guys that are going to be like, "I'm going to do the same thing every year and hope it works." But but I'm different because year to year, you don't you don't know what's going to happen. You have to be super present. Yeah. So year to year, body, mind, relationships, you it's hard for me to go into every year, oh, I'm going to do this training program. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on this same way. Because like I said, in order to be your best self and stay most present, you have to be open to your surroundings. You have to be open to everything around you. And you have to be, like you said, accepting what's being thrown at you. And if, if you're doing that, there's no way you're going to be able to stay within the same routine. Right. So I have a routine, but I'm so open and fluid within the routine. I know my body and my mind at this point where, like you said, I'm, if anyone has anything that could possibly make, my, make me better that I haven't tried yet, I would be open to it. Mm. And then I would curate it around my vibe and around my routine. Yeah. But I truly believe you can't be rigid and sh so structured in your way that you can't move. Oh, I, I need to train this way or I need this person in my life or I need this because now you're just creating rigidness. And when you have rigidness, nothing flows in tune. Right. So I truly believe you're going to go through a ton of things in life. You're, you know, you're going to lose people. You're going to gain new people. But if you're stuck to the idea that, oh, I need to do this a certain type of way, then what happens when things don't go that way? You know? So I think you always have to be open to change. And I feel like that's, that's a reason why I'm still at where I'm at, elevating and continue to my mind and my body feel the best it's ever, ever, probably ever felt. And it's because, like you said, I've been open to changing, um, whether it be how I train, whether it be how I train my mind, whether it be who I'm going to speak to away from the field, mm -hmm. whether it be a relationship that maybe was draining me in the past that now that's no longer good for me and doesn't serve any purpose. And maybe I'm open to accepting a, a new relationship into my life now. Yeah. So I truly believe without that variability within there, I wouldn't be at the place where I'm at. I think I would have been possibly out of my career and not truly at a place where I feel free and clear and able to do what I want to do on the daily. Yeah. And uh, just as somebody who's been with you, how we doing, big boy? Are we good? As somebody who's been with you, I think you're doing it incredibly well. I mean, it's a... Uh, we talk about it a lot, but it's been such a such a crazy ride. I mean, yeah. we're fucking, oh, before I forget, before yeah. I forget, I got a children's book out. I want I wanted to yeah, say that for yeah, sure. Of course, of course. Children's book, Simon and Schuster. It's called The Grip. It's loosely based on my upbringing as a kid, divorced household, African American, Puerto Rican. Deals with mental adversity, navigating uh, the things thrown at you, thrown at you in life, the ups and downs. It's now out um, on multiple platforms. It's the first of a three book volume. We have another one that I'm working on and writing He's right going now. Trilogy. Trilogy, yeah, right off the bat. But for children, it's like geared for eight to 12 year olds and it truly is for mental mental health. And it's geared around helping them deal with the bully in school, the things they may see online, uh, not being able to perform in a game or, or having the pressures of 
balancing school and 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 sports. So it's truly it's truly a good book. I love it. It's gotten great reviews. Um, I would just love came for out, right? Yeah, it just came out. I was just in New York doing press for it. Yeah, we need all Steves who have kids just just to go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go I got you. I got you. <laughs> what what uh? I mean, feeling like I've known you for so long, we never really talked about your childhood and some of the some of the, some of the those times really because yeah. think about it, we've just been in the present, so mm -hmm. much going on. But for sure, what what made you want to do that? Like, you don't have to do that. You're fucking super wealthy and very busy. Yeah, no, but I want to do that. Like, I honestly see how much of a role model I am to the youth, and I and I truly want to be. You know what I mean? I'm someone who I worked extremely hard to get where I'm at, but I'm also, like you said, I'm also a visionary, creative, and I I have a vision to do things off the field as well. But I'm also someone who knows that nobody outworks me when it comes to the athlete side as well. So when it comes to the world and young kids, I'm African American, Puerto Rican. I went to Duke University. I'm playing in the big leagues. I recovered from an ACL, went back to school, got my degree. I'm truly this creative entrepreneur with my own foundation. I, I just want to be able to show kids that they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be single-minded. You can be multidimensional. Um, and obviously, like you that's said- kind I, of, That's kind of a narrative that-, that Yeah, it's a false it narrative is, it that, is. And well, maybe it's not false for some people, but mm -hmm. the idea to be as good as you are at something, mm -hmm. you know- there, there's an argument that just be like, hey man, you're just you're. It, there is validity to you just being you, which is very rare. You know, like having this thirst for life and yeah. very smart guy, yeah. and very creative. Yeah, a lot of baseball guys or or athletes in general, they aren't right. Mm -hmm. It's just not mm -hmm. innately in them. But on top of that, to be as great as you are, to to get to the big leagues or the pro level at anything. It takes this absurd amount of dedication and sacrifice of time and energy. So, you know, for you, was it like as you got, you achieved the dream, you get drafted, that's part of the dream. You get mm -hmm. to the big leagues, part of the dream. You have success, that's part of the dream. Mm -hmm. Was it when you kind of created, all right, look, I feel like I'm here. I'm in this space. You had this hunger for more to just start doing more and showing, yeah. showing, because I want to even talk about just like the way you are on social media and like the path, like where you stand and how you're digesting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I, I see you interacting. There's shit that you definitely want to talk about on there, mm -hmm. and and just understanding how you're how you're seeing it from where you're sitting and, and the whys. You know, yeah. I, I like I like I don't know as a as a best friend of yours. Yeah, I like for people to, you know, I I see a, a bunch of people that don't know you want to. You know, it's the nature of Twitter and the internet yeah, and yeah, yeah. sports fans. But mm -hmm. you know, try to minimize you or or try to put you, pigeonhole you into being like a disgruntled, you know, yeah, no. like a you know that whole thing. And I, I hate you know, I don't, I won't even say I hate to see it because I know what it is. Yeah, like I, I know what the truth is. Yeah, one, yeah. two. <laughs> It's the way of the world. You can't change people. But I just want, I want more people to really know you yeah. the way I do because it's like, bro, you're just the super yeah, easygoing no, guy. 100%. You, know, 100%. you really are though. You're a yeah. very easygoing guy for the most part. Like, mm -hmm. You're not fucking confrontational, but there's yeah. things that you clearly want to talk about and address and put people... There's something where you... You know, I, I want to know more about it and mm -hmm. I want people to kind of hear how you're digesting it. Yeah, no, I'm like... When I look at myself as a role model in that sense, I, I realize I'm an African-American, Puerto Rican in this society and I know what I've had to deal with on the come up. I, like I said, I, I, I truly can tell you that most people would not be able to handle the DMs I get or get on the daily basis. Um, and I've just, I've found this calm where, like I said, nothing affect me, but younger me, it used to kind of eat at me and I used to pitch with like this fire in me to like, I hate the world. But now I'm at the point where I realize I just need to be myself and be authentic and get my word out because that's who I am as a person. And at the end of the day, like you said, I'm an African-American Puerto Rican. So I'm already looked at and viewed differently than most. People have different perspectives when they grow up in narratives. So when you're coming from someone who grew up with an African-American father and a Puerto Rican mother and my, and my dad was a cop. So my dad was a, real with me when I was growing up. He told me exactly what I was gonna face in this world. The That's hardship true. that I was gonna face as a young kid. The things that people were gonna say to me. Um, how people were gonna view me when I walked into a room. And 
I'm now that same person, but I'm tatted now. Up to my neck, I have dreads. So I already know how I'm viewed by a certain demographic or a certain person with a certain narrative perspective of myself before I even walk into a room. And I know that other athletes, individuals in my position, especially people of color, are receiving the same thing. And it bothers me. I can take it. I'm straight. But it bothers me that it might affect the young kid coming up to the point where it might mentally damage him, where now he can't even go out and do what he wants to do in life. He can't perform. Now he's being, now he's a mess off the field and it's affecting everything. Because like I said, when you're receiving that a much amount of hate, it's not comforting for anybody. And especially now, I know myself, like I said, I got to a point where I'm, I'm gonna always receive that. I'm opinionated. I'm always gonna say my piece. Mm -hmm. I'm not shy of public opinion. Yeah. Um, like I said, I realize I'm a voice for the youth and kids out there. You don't know how many kids DM me all the time that look up to me, that are I, I I'm in contact with. I reach out. And that with. really moves you. Yeah, I love that. I love the genuine the genuine interaction. I love kids, and and I want to do everything in my power to be a voice for them and to show them. Like I said, especially the ones that look like me, the ones that look like me when they know how hard it is to make it in this world. When you look like me, I want to be a source of inspiration. And in order to do so, I need to take what comes with it. And like I said, I'm at the point where I'm okay with it. I'm not gonna. I would never be the person who just shuts up and gets by. You're gonna. You're gonna hear my thoughts. I'm gonna say what I need to say. I couldn't care less of how you're gonna take it, mm -hmm. because there's a whole demographic out there who I need to speak to. And at the end of the day, I know how 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 inspirational I am to that that demographic that looks up to me. And yeah, it's 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 tough at points, but it affects me more because I know that there's kids coming up. I know my young brother. I know my son's gonna have to deal with it. It's interesting. It's interesting because it gets pigeonholed as selfish. Mm -hmm. Like this guy's self-absorbed, but it's. I just. That's kind of what I wanted to get to. That yeah. it's actually coming from an opposite space. Yeah, way You're opposite. Thinking about <laughs> thinking about just like the radi how it radiates yeah, because into the universe and and how what what the implications are. Mm -hmm. You know, when you were that age and things happen. You know, we were growing up in a different era. Like you didn't have. It wasn't Twitter for athletes. Mm -mm. People you were looking up to. You didn't know, have to deal with you it. You didn't have that. So this is kind of a new vantage point, an opportunity, it seems. And I just think it's interesting that you take it as that opportunity yeah. when most people are digesting it as something very self-absorbed. I just know it isn't. Yeah, my know? second book is based around social media for Simon & Schuster. It'll be called The Spin. And it'll be... That's a, cool. Yeah, it'll be called The Spin and it'll be pretty much based around dealing with negativity from social media and how to navigate that. With, cool. Within school, all, out of school, how it yeah, kind of takes over your emotions. Yeah, we just get behind the, the, <laughs> the uh, for real. Just, yeah, 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 for sure. Be, if you got a lot of my, it's weird, yeah. but a lot of my fans now have kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that though. <laughs> you know, That's like, how it should be. It really, it's yeah, crazy, yeah. you know. It's, it's uh, when you talk about change, I, I mm -hmm. feel like, again, I've kind of lived parallel to you in some ways in regards to just being open to this change. And I preach it, you know, yeah. because it really helped me make the, the, I guess jumping from station to station or moving from moving fluidly through life and how you there's so many choices. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's yeah, yeah. so many personal choices you have to make. Yeah. And having that inner guidance system, I think, you know, it's it's really it's really dope that you're taking the you take that approach though. You know what I mean? I, I remember we sat at Nobu a while back. Mm -hmm. And I, I you know, I'm I'm Mr. Woo Woo, you know everything's great you yeah, know yeah. like i really do try to radiate and stay in that because you know you know me like mm -hmm. you know me the real like yeah for sure for sure how like i was i had a <laughs> rage inside me you know what i mean like yeah, think about yeah, me back yeah. in the day no i know i know you know what i mean like <laughs> marcus met me i mean you were what 18 yeah, 17, 17, 18. Yeah. I was just fell off the mountain of like I was living my dream all American pitcher at yeah. first at Duke, like went better than expected. Yeah. Arm falls apart. Yeah. You come into town. I think I repressed, like, I remember thinking about the time when I was I was injured and I was devastated, but I wouldn't show anyone. Mm -hmm. I repressed it. Yeah, you hold it all in. And yeah. and that's part of my approach to life in the sense of like, I didn't even know what, how, what I was doing. It wasn't strategic, mm -hmm. but I was manifesting that a positive outcome. I yeah. wasn't allowing myself to live. You know, I would look at my parents, they'd come to the game, you know, my parents, they'd drive down 
and I'm like throwing 84 two years later and like my arm doesn't yeah. work the same. And it's yeah. this, this sadness on their face. They mm -hmm. can't hide it. Meanwhile, I'm hiding it. You yeah. know what I mean? But that journey there, you know, as I've gotten here and I'm like really a different person, I used to be very hectic minded, very chaotic inside. Mm -hmm. I had chaos. Like yeah. if somebody said one fucking thing wrong to me. <laughs> yeah, you lose it. I was losing yeah. it. And it wasn't even like I was angry. I was like, yeah. I was like a little twisted. Like yeah. I would be laughing. Like, you yeah. know, remember we'd, I'd like knock, I would walk up to dudes at the bar and just be like, yeah, what'd what and you just, say? And just knock them the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> we turned shooters upside down. Yeah. Can't talk about I, those I don't even know how many times, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, enough time. What's the, what's the thing where enough time goes by? I should know this. Enough time goes by where you, statute of limitations. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be charged. I mean, I caught a charge. I caught a. I, I know, talked about. I, it. I caught a serious yeah, I know, charge. I it I wasn't know. with you. No, you, no, no, no. I yeah. was when I just went to Georgetown. Yeah. But I mean, the chaos inside, the rage. I think a lot of it came from anything that ever happened to me. Yeah. I pushed down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I pushed down. Like I had a deep insecurity and fear of being past my heyday. At one point, when yeah. I was like 24, 25. I was in this house in LA, thought everything I wanted, you know, meanwhile, we're partying, yeah. all these people around that, you know, draining my energy. For sure. And couldn't couldn't look myself in the mirror and like be present, be happy, you know? Yep. I really feel like really what it was, was the first time I shined a light inside and I like, I literally felt like a thousand pounds weight lifted, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and that journey has just been so, so fucking important for me. You're just somebody who's seen it. You saw seen me from at, the like, jump. when I was, <laughs> you know, and I and I took that shit into into the career. I was still like fucking knocking people out on tour if they said something like yeah. for a while. <laughs> you know, I really had to shake. I really had to shake. <laughs> oh man, we were really we were really on on yeah. a crazy wave at Duke, but uh, and and after that, but I mean, people be like. They weren't doing nothing at Duke. People were like, you know what I mean? Because really people hear, were. I know, but people think like, oh, dude, they, them dudes are fucking. They weren't doing shit. Yeah, we were really. You were rowdy. We were rowdy. Really wild boys. Yeah. Like, shout out Sean McNally. He was trying to wrangle us. <laughs> he, he didn't. He didn't have the right approach. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, we were really turned up. Like uh, I was really turned up on that shit, you know. And and I think so younger. You got You got to get it out. Right. You know I think I mean? part of it. Part of that dog is why I got here. Like hundred percent dog. That's what I'm and saying. And I think a lot of your shit is like. Yeah, bro. I still have that mentality between the lines. But like HDMH, even what yeah. it stands for, it's like yo, fuck you. Yeah. I can you, get this done. Yeah. You really were fueled. Mm -hmm. And I think we talked about this, whether on a podcast or not. I want to kind of revisit it. It's just like you said something that was it showed me you were growing in the right way. It's just like. I was wait. I was getting under the spiritual vibe and like watching you regulate how you were feeling. Mm -hmm. And you said something to me about like, yeah, you know, I don't. It was like, uh, I don't really pitch with that with that anger anymore. Yeah, you don't. know, like something switched. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And realizing that it's actually taking taking away. It, well, it's it's taking poison that someone's offering you and taking it. One hundred percent. Like these people that want to doubt, and but like you also know. Yeah. Talking about change and evolving. It worked for you. Mm -hmm. Something worked for you in the fear of failing and not being able to say fuck you to those people. Yeah. You were so scared of not being able to do that. Yeah. That it drove you to here. But then when you get here, yeah. you can't. Don't, you can only, you can only, you can only go so long with that. Yeah. Because then I got to the point where, like you said, if you watch me pitch now for the next few years, like I, I'm on a wave. Like I'm not, I don't really argue. There might be something here and there. I have like a quick, but younger me, I was like yelling after every pitch. And I just got to the point where it's the same thing, conserving energy. Conserving energy is the biggest thing, like breathing. My breathing is like, I breathe better than I promise you most athletes. Talk about because it it's bit. also something that I work on. Harvey Martin, he actually just released a book, shout out to Harvey Martin. He's my breathing coach. He's on retainer actually with the, I'm pretty sure he's on staff. He's a part of the San Francisco or, um, Giants organization. Okay. Super progressive organization. Like they're awesome as far as it comes to like, being open to things that really help the mind and body connection. So he does a lot of like barefoot walking with those guys, a lot of barefoot breathing out in the field. Me and him have gotten on this way for a few years now. Brian Peters also, it's called the Mind Strong Project. Brian Peters is an ex NFL player. Shout out to Brian. Both of these dudes just like came to my crib a few times. And I mean, just from that point, bro. The whole breathing journey for me, I, I truly attest a lot of that to why I'm still in the big leagues performing as I do. Um, 
breathing is huge. Not enough people focus on their breathing in life. It essentially is the one thing you come in life with and the one thing you leave life with. A lot of people are mouth breathers. I just learned how to properly breathe. You good? Yeah, sorry. I just learned how to properly breathe um, ever since they taught me. Harvey Martin, like I said, Harvey Martin and Brian Peters. We do elevation breathing, stress breathing, cold water breathing. They'll just show up. We'll do um, yoga. We'll do sauna. It's just a vibe of connecting mind and body. And when you mix that with the, the idea of breathing and learning how to breathe properly, slowing your, your breaths per minutes down. So you're essentially breathing less throughout the day, which means you're living longer on the back end. When you breathe I love, properly. I love that. Now I love when you also when you when you breathe properly, it limits stress, anxiety. Anytime I'm 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 going out of of character or my mind, my first thing I go to is my breath. And like I said, a big thing is learning how to properly nasal breathe. So you're essentially breathing in through your nose and out your mouth and out your nose, in your nose and out your nose all day. Um, you want it to get to the point where you don't have this stressed mouth bre mouth breathing, and it's hard to do when you when you think about it. But like I said, I've gotten to the point where I check myself and my mouth is open, I close it. Um, obviously when you're talking, it's different, but you really wanna learn how to breathe while expanding your rib cage, not breathing into your shoulders. A lot of people are like, I'm gonna take a deep breath. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, It is the natural. Yeah, and when you learn how to properly take a deep breath, like, it's like expanding your rib cage. You have so much room in there Everyone for air. Everyone at take a deep one in. <laughs> And then it's also slowly letting go out of your mouth. So when you learn how to properly breathe, man, like I said, it's just every situation becomes calmer. You become more relaxed. Like I'm on the mound on a wave because my breathing's so good. There's nothing that can throw me off my mix. And when you breathe better, now your body's in line. You're connected. Everything flows better. When your breathing is off, you move rigid structure. I'm trying to move like water, very loose, very fluid. This is what I wanted to put. I'm happy this is happening because this is just the way, the way beautiful conversations <laughs> work. It's just like... This is what I what I want people to understand is like that that's where this where he's choosing to to give his energy towards and how he's approaching life where I know this but then people are envisioning you like stomping around your house pissed off Twitter Twitter battles yeah, meanwhile no. you're like this Dude, I literally go on Twitter, I say my piece, and I'm like, yeah. it don't matter to me after yeah. that. <laughs> I really think- I got so much I'm working I don't, on. I don't today. see, I, I just want to stay on the breath a little bit more. Like, I don't see baseball guys. I don't see athletes in particular, not a ton, at least. And I'm pretty active, like, looking at shit, like, and in the health space and athletic space. And mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of people talking about the importance of breath. And a lot of the spiritual stuff that I'm into, I mean- when you go like yogis and people in India and a lot of these places, they're the right? best breathers. The kids, the first class they take, breathing. how to breathe. Yeah, that's, which is they, crazy. They don't, they don't learn how to fucking color or draw Dude, or that's count. Why, that's important. And it's, because, think about it, it's the most important thing. Now, I'm somebody who's learned about it. I actively work on myself. I'm very deep in the self care game, and still, just now, like six years into meditating, just now realizing how bad I breathe. And the the amount of energy, the amount of energy that can be cons uh, conserved. conserved. Yeah. You know, I'm just really just pulling back those layers. It's really it's really kind of crazy. I think it's a hack to athletics. It can change careers. It can change lives. This is what I'm gonna say. Not only could I don't snore anymore since I've been breathing properly. I sleep deeper. Like I said, my stress, my anxiety is way less. Like when you're breathing less per day, you're way calmer. Think about any time you get stressed or anything throws you off, it's essentially like, <laughs> it's, it becomes stress mouth breathing. You know what I mean? Yeah, when absolutely. you learn how to regulate that, when it's now, it's like, oh, I have this situation. Let me go to my breathing. Yeah. Those situations, your shoulders, your shoulders lower down, your, your spine's in line, your rib cage is down. Mm -hmm. Nothing can really affect me now because like I said, you create a lot of those situations yourself and breathing has a lot to do with it. Yeah. When you breathe bad, now you're creating more stress, more anxiety onto yourself. What about if you did it the opposite way? What about creating less? What, what about taking away from it? Which was what breathing can do. And like you said, meditation, breathing goes, br breathing and spirituality, meditation, it goes hand in hand All with everything. Connected. But breathing and also performance when it comes to athletic is a whole, whole, whole tool slash untapped weapon that not enough enhancing. people don't tap into. Exactly. And I see a bunch of guys all the time out on the field. And I honestly, man, I wish I could talk to everybody, but it's so hard for me to talk to everybody and give them like, I wish I can, anybody I see, I'm always trying to help people. You know what I mean? I'm the first person after a game to text someone 
and hit him up and be like, hey, I think this would help you. You know what I mean? I truly believe that that genuine intuition on trying to help someone, you always need to tap in. But I see guys all the time performing that I know are breathing so improper that I know that that could be the last tool that could possibly take them to, 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 from being mediocre to all-star level. It could be their breathing. And it's something that they never even thought to process or something that they're maybe too stubborn to even work on. Because a lot of athletes are stubborn. Oh, breathing's not gonna help me. What is yeah. breathing gonna do for me? You know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't still be in the big leagues if I didn't breathe properly. I wouldn't still be in the big leagues if I didn't focus on stability, core, strength. Like I move, I move like a ninja, essentially. I move way different than I was when I was in my younger 20s and I've elongated my career. I'll pitch forever now because I've been open to that change. As long as you want to. Yeah, whenever I want. Yeah. So, and that's because I've been open. I was never rigid in structure. I mean, you came in Think about how we worked out at Duke. I mean, exactly. Terribly. We worked out like a fucking football terribly. team and, a tra and ran like a track team. It was bad. And I'm glad I made it out of there without getting hurt. That's well, that that ACL tear it was probably a product. Of it that. was built. It was it was built there. For sure. Just doing. Uh, I agree. Slap me on the back. I'm gonna squat. Do you remember how much I used to squat? I know. I know. Me too, bro. It's stupid. It, yeah, you did too. Yeah, you did too. I mean, it's I crazy. was doing. We were doing. Three, four plates, I think, getting up, easy, doing like, yeah, doing four plate squats, and everyone Back yelling, squats. And screaming, like terrible we're the form. football team. And it's like, bro, yeah. knowing what we know now, it's just so crazy. I think that ability to stay open minded, mm -hmm. open heart 100%. to things that just connect with you and feel feel right to you. I exactly. Mean, you would, we would have never thought that we'd be talking about breathing. And really, I just, I, I really think you can. I want to go back to this. Like when you see people now, are you yes or no? Are you reaching out to people and trying to give them those hints? Like I do. Guys in the big leagues? Obviously not as not all the time, but yeah, I do in pockets. But and you understand the level of service. Like people take it as it, when you have this spirituality. I didn't mean to cut you off there. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, you're good. The this you on like you and a lot of the shit that we go back and forth about this idea of service. A lot of the stuff you're doing is in service, where people think it's. You know, a lot of it's the opposite. Even the Twitter stuff and and standing your ground and letting people yeah. see what's really happening. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's a service undertone to it. Even that, like yeah. telling people, yeah, hitting your, I love that. Yeah, I just and just like like you said, just from watching and genuine, a bunch of guys obviously reach out to me too, and I'm always having genuine conversations. Go link with guys before the game, and I always dive in. I was saying it's like I have so much to say. It's hard to really wrap everything in in like one combo with one person. Yeah. As far as routine, mindset, spirituality, because everything is connected. I truly believe it's all connected. So if someone comes to me and they're like, "Hey, how do I get better?" or "How do I do this?" It's hard for me to die ever for me personally to say, "Oh, it's one specific thing." Yeah. I I truly believe it's it's everything. It's me focusing on my mind away from the field, having a therapist. It's me getting in my hyperbaric chamber every other night for however long, it's the little steps you take that kind of add all in together that allow themselves to kind of fuse and now you're at the point where you want to get to. But yeah, I'm always reaching out to guys. If I watch guys, even opponents, like opponents, like I'll That's watch fire. them from the, other, from, from the other dugout and I'll be like, I, I know what can help that. I know what can help them. Or I know a little, a little tool or a little fix that I can say that could possibly push them over the edge. And like I said, I've tried and have done so many things I, I feel like I have a good feel for what can help certain individuals yeah. because I know how structured guys are and I know I pretty much have tried and done everything when it comes to mind body. In regards to people working out, we talked about this. I mean, you, are you grimacing as you look around and watch how other baseball guys are working out? Because just the way do. you're doing it is such a core. It's, they're, they're just almost Pilates-esque in the sense of all functional movement, fluidity-based. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you see guys doing the traditional workouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely FMS, FMS base, Gray Function Cook, Gray systems, Cook, Gray that... Cook, and Lee Burton. I think those are the gods when it comes to the body. So you guys, Gray Cook and Lee Burton, you guys can go look those guys do, up. Do they know you personally? Do you guys have no? Them? But we know it through Nikki Huffman, who's my trainer. Yep. Um, she worked right under them. She was like an intern under them. She like learned everything from from them. They're the masters. They're like the gods when it comes to the body and, and how to move properly. Mm. So that's the system of training where I come from. Yeah, it's mobility, stability based. And it's incredible. Like I said, I'm at the point where I'm 31 now. My body feels way better now than it did when I was younger. And my training is always changing and adapting, but it's always based kind of on that system. My, my, my form and my functionality and the way I'm able to, to move, bear crawl, handstand, those are all essential patterns that require an incredible amount of stability, core strength, and also, which people don't understand, 
me being able to do those movements is helping to elongate my career. So yeah, Lee Burton and Gray Cook, like those guys are the gods. If you understand the body and the problem with athletes is a lot of trainers don't even know who those guys are or understand those movement patterns yeah. because it's easy to get a trainer certification. So there's a lot of trainers that truly under, don't really understand the body or movement it almost, patterns. It almost feels like it's obvious once you get, to, once you pay attention, it's obvious the functionality. I think anyone who has body issues, like I've had some body issues mm -hmm. and you kind of put me on this wave, my yeah. dad also, but yeah, like it's kind of obvious once you get there and you think about your big muscle, you know, like this whole, yeah. it's all breath, it all comes from core, here. It's all here. Trunk. Yeah. You know what I mean? But and it's something you never focus on. It's all, cause as males, it's all, let me throw weights around, you know? It's honestly, it, even if you go a step further, like Joseph Pilates, he was the founder of Pilates. Like that guy was a legend, his movement. His body was big in Pilates. Huge, huge in Pilates. I have a reformer in my house. A lot of my movements are Pilates based. I go on and I do reformer Pilates whenever I can. When you can move like that, like I said, now you have that core stability and then you add the strength on top of it, you're 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 unstoppable. Yeah. And people don't understand that. You need to be able to move like that. A lot of guys don't have that core strength, don't have that stability, but are strong. Mm. And you're just waiting to be hurt at that point. Yeah. You need to pair both. And that's the only way to truly be good for long. I'm 5'7", and I came from everyone telling me that I was going to break down. Everyone went in saying I was going to be a relief pitcher yeah. because they didn't think I'd be, I'm going to go out there and throw 180, 200 innings year after year. Yeah. But that's only because I trained and I went to this FMS base, Greg Cook, Lee Burton, Joseph Pilates. I kind of grouped those. I'm giving you all the recipe. Kind of grouped those guys into one. Then you add the strength part on top of that. But you need the stability part first. Because if you're building strength on a weak foundation. 100%. So people don't realize my, my every off season, my workouts, I start from the basics. I'll be in a room, just four walls, maybe a TRX on the wall. And I'm doing patterning. I pattern every off season. So I get my RDL, my squat, my hinge patterns, um, whatever it may be do. I get it to the point where my form is perfect. So I'll be dripping sweat in a room holding an <laughs> RDL. Yeah, holding an RDL position, holding a pistol squat. So now my patterns, my core, everything's elite. And then when it's elite, then you add weight. So now when you add weight, not only do you start add weight, when you add weight, you just start to increase and your gains just start to go through <laughs> yeah. the roof. Yeah. So, but the, the foundation of it always comes back to core, stability, FMS, P Joseph Pilates, Greg Cook, Lee Burn. It always comes back there. So if you're ever going through a spurt, you need to dumb it down and go back to movements, go back to patterning. You're going through any of your things in your body? Oh no, not more weight. Let's go back to patterning. Let's deload. Let's get the movement proper to where I can do it perfectly, to where I'm not feeling any deficiencies in my left side, my right side. You want to be, you, you want to be bilateral, not unilateral. So you want to be able to do everything from the right side. And get the whole game. You want to be able to do everything from the right side that you do from the left side. So a lot of, a lot of things I do is single leg. So there's a whole idea to unwinding as well. So if I throw hundred pitches in the game, by the next time I get out to the mound, before my next start five days later, I have I will have gone through my my motion a hundred times lefty before I get back out on the mound. And how many people in the big leagues do you think are doing anything? Not many. To I that? think you Darvish is on it, which makes sense. Like he's like so ahead, like his movement and the way he's able to move his body. He's 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 ahead of he's ahead of the wave too. I I don't know exactly what he's doing, but I could just look. It will be see. interesting to see the, yeah. if this if people. I, I think it will naturally happen. Mm -hmm. This will become more and more universally known and and celebrated and put into practice. For sure. It's dope that you're at the cutting edge of it. And it's really just been at a hunger for trying to, for longevity and success for yourself. I you, think it's going to elongate careers. Like, I think it's going to help you're guys. You're deep in the kinesiology bag. Like, I've yeah. been with you where you're like telling, you're talking. No, I know the body. Yeah, I know yeah, the you body. Know the entire ins and outs of where. That's from Nikki Huffman. She taught me the body. I, I, I truly, I'm biased, I, obviously slightly, but I think she's the best trainer. I've been around, around a lot of trainers mm. and seen a lot of people and nobody compares to her truly. And like I said, I, I know I'm biased, but she's she's remarkable. And I feel like I know the body now better than most trainers. Yeah, I feel like I can go train anybody. I, I, I can help guys in the gym. I'm always correcting guys walking around, telling guys positionally how their body cool. should be in the gym. So I, I, I love that. I love the body and I know how well I move now. And I, I wish everybody could move like that. Because you also came from the other side of the coin where you know you felt pretty fucking rigid. I was before. so rigid and yeah. recovering. I felt like I got hit by a bus after every start and like I couldn't recover. By the time I got back out there to my next start five days later, I was pitching. I felt like at 80%. Uh, and, and it just kept snowballing, snowballing. You keep feeling like that. And I, I ended up breaking down. Yeah. So I, I truly believe that 
I have the sauce when it comes to the body and truly how it should move, how it should function, because I've done this with a five, seven frame. So you take, you take someone who's crazy and you add their ability. If they, if they were able to gain that mobility, that stability, that strength, if they were to bear crawl, handstand properly, being able to handstand properly is overhead shoulder stability, which is incredible it's, for pitching. It's great, yeah. It's like being exactly able to what bear, you need. Yeah, being able to bear crawl probably, that's like takes so much, it. that takes so much core strength and shoulder strength. It's, it takes, it really it's like a so full body, like to be able to do that, if you can move like that, your body's in a better position to perform now than if you can't. Right. You know how many athletes I've taken and I've, I've had them do like little exercises like here and, and they, they can't come close to doing any of that. And that's a big red flag for me, especially from younger athletes, because I know when you, once you start to add on wear and tear, years start aging. to build up, yep. aging, now you're not moving properly. You're not going to be able to perform. Your body's not going to be in a good space. And how are you going to be able to truly get to where you want to get to? Yeah, and the damage will compound with age, with time, and just more yeah. wear and tear. So exactly. I'm always trying to teach people. But it's also like, you can't just go bear crawl. You can't just go handstand. No. People don't understand how much work and hours. I think hours. that's really cool, though. That what you were talking about is it's the patterning. Mm -hmm. I forget the word you use when you say at the, the beginning patterning. of the off-season. Patterning. patterning. Yeah, so pattern every pretty much every exercise where it's perfect. Unilaterally, bilaterally. Like I said, I'll be drenched holding an RDL, holding a squat, holding no a plank, holding a side plank, no weights, yeah. but getting incredible work in. Well, this is the first, uh, the first ever podcast in the dark. <laughs> hey, how are you? Um, before we get off, um, we're in California. Last time I saw you throw a baseball in this state, you was the World Baseball Classic. Uh-oh. You, uh, you fucking, really, it was, I think I was just, we, we're, we just had such odd lives where like, you know, we're just achieving. You yeah. see me achieving, mm -hmm. you know, where it started. I see you achieving, you know, where it started. It's hard. It, it was a little bit before I was a little younger and a little bit before I was tr practicing true presence and yeah. really thinking about what's happening. Mm -hmm. But I saw you dominate the World Baseball Classic in person. <laughs> I was there. Yeah. Probably the last baseball game I've gone to. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, we're, we're knocking on the door of the next World Baseball Classic. You're getting ready to go soon, right? Yeah, I'm ready, man. My body, my my stuff's ready. And where is it? I'm playing for Team Puerto Rico this year. Yeah, and that's that's an interesting. What yeah. made what made that choice? Uh, I played for Team USA the first time, and I just had it in my gut to to represent my mother. Like my mom's my rock. My mom's my best friend. My mom handles all my day to day. She's my manager. She's the momager. She, yeah, she 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 she's she's the best. Um, mm. Shout out to my mom. Love you more than anything. She's my rock. Like I said, she's truly my rock. So yeah, I just wanted to go out and. That's really dope. Represent my mom, play with some of my, my, my buddies in the league, Lindor, Baez, Correa. It's just a great time for baseball culturally. Like, I feel like I vibe with those guys mm -hmm. um, when it comes to my, my Puerto Rican side, my Puerto Rican flair. That's where a lot of my swag, my flair comes from, that Absolutely. Puerto Rican side. My baseball side, I'm very thankful for my mother for that. So, yeah, I just wanted to go represent that side. Yeah. It's just an incredible opportunity for me in, in one lifetime to be able to represent two different countries. Exciting, bro. It's just very, very exciting for me. So, yeah, go out there. I've been getting ready early, been training, throwing up here at Pepperdine, mm -hmm. through a 55 pitch bullpen. I'm ready. I stay ready, but I'm, I'm ready. My body and my, my, my stuff is, is ready you to seem rock. I'm excited so. to do it to, uh, to, I mean, I, I'm always excited to pitch, man. You know, I'm always excited to pitch because I always know, I always know how I'm performing in the end. Is that you when know? you feel most alive still to this day? Pitching? On the mound, I feel alive. I, I feel alive in certain other pockets. When I get in certain creative pockets is when I feel real alive, whether it be working on um, music, my clothing, my book. Those, those pockets make me re feel very, very alive. And then, yeah, you can't, to feel that, that buzz, that's a whole different vibe, though, of like going out there. That's a whole different mind state I'm in. That's a whole different space I'm in. Yeah. We can't talk about some of the, the <laughs> we can't talk about the, some of the space I'm in when I pitch, yeah. but that's a crazy place. That pitch day for me, that start day, it's like, it's euphoric. It's sacred. It's amazing. It's hard to explain everything that goes and leads up to a start day. And then the feeling, the emotion, I don't eat the night before. I can't eat. I can't talk sometimes This guy to doesn't eat, doesn't <laughs> drink, doesn't barely talk to anyone. Yeah. But the eating and drinking thing is just like... I'm just on pure you're, adrenaline. You're And you're a very high testosterone guy just very naturally. High. Yes. And I think that's... like Because most people think, you know, food and fuel and dehydration and... 
You're going out there and performing your highest level. Yeah. It's crazy that you've you've always been like this, you know? Like, yeah, you find your mix, right? Everyone's got like a little potion, a little concoction. Yeah. Of like going out there, which I, I can't I can't say what's in that concoction. <laughs> but I'm talking about when I mean concoction, it's what you do the night before. It's what you do day yeah, of. It's your vibe. And then other concoctions as well. Yeah. And you have to do whatever it is to put your place in, in, in the best most clear space in order to go out there and perform in front right. of 40, 50,000 right. every other night right. in high pressure situations. Yeah. It's not easy to do. I have just created, I, I know exactly what I need to be able to go out there and do what I need to do. Yeah. I, uh, it's, it's pitch dark, so we're going to have to it's stop. Pitch dark. We, gotta we, stop. Could, we could talk for hours. We'll, <laughs> we'll make sure we, we maintain uh, Marcus reappearances for as long as we're brothers. I'll be back be on forever. here. We're going yeah. to go make some few, a few songs right now. He is... Uh, just drop the book, please, please, Steve. You got you got kids, you got nieces. Cop that. It's generally like a great book. Like even if even if it wasn't for me, I would say go get this book. Yeah. Like even if it was it's 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 great, especially for that, like I said, that seven, eight to twelve, thirteen year olds. Because a lot of kids these days are dealing with a lot of pressure. Social media, kids, bullies, pressures of parents, divorced households. There's so many things that are thrown your way. So this book is just like a little like a little outlook on what you may face and it just shows you that you can pretty much navigate and get through anything in life just as long as you have the proper proper team around you and we talk about breathing a lot in the book breathing cool. is a breathing is a huge point in the book so yeah i think it can help Amazing. a lot of kids it a lot will. of kids it will i uh we'll sign off here i i uh being your dog it's been a fun ride to watch you watch you do what you do and and uh one of one of the more valuable relationships in my life you know Facts. We have very small circles, respectively. Um, but but to be able to share it and somebody who just like you were in the you were in the closet with the towels on the wall. I was <laughs> I was rapping uh, in a, to a garage band hundred dollar <laughs> mic and you were T -Pain, there. T Pain and you like co-signed it early. T Pain Smule. I've had the sound, bro. I've had the sound. I, He's got a good I got ear. The ear bro. I got the ear. We're gonna uh, if you if you watched in the dark this long, you're gonna oh, you hear it here first. We're gonna drop. <laughs> we're gonna, me and Marcus working on some tunes. We're gonna get the boy out here. It's time to make some music. Cheers. Just need it. Love you, sir. Yes, sir. Love you. <laughs>